Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the preceding part of the Panda 3D series, we learned the basics of Blender. It's time to apply our knowledge and create our first actual asset we're gonna use in the game. As there are going to be more and more files, it's advisable to organize them in one way or another. Let's create a file hierarchy for our project inside the project folder. We're gonna stick to Panda 3D terminology, where the term models is used for static objects and actors for characters. In Blender, everything you create is a model, so I may be using the term actor and model interchangeably in Blender context from time to time, but it shouldn't be a problem. So let's create two folders in our project folder, models and actors. Here we are in our project folder, so let's create a models folder and an actors folder. From now on, we'll be putting all our models and actors in these two folders. We'll be creating a separate folder for each model and actor and then, for simplicity's sake, we'll be putting all the files associated with that model or actor directly into it. So the blend file, the texture files, and also the GLTF files we can use in Panda 3D. And now, let's get to work. It's modeling time. So, let's build the building. Here we go. Follow the steps. First, open Blender. Now you can see a default cube out of the box. Now go to the file menu, save as, now browse for your project folder, now models, and here save this file as building.bland file. So our project is already saved. Now, actually we could use this default cube, but it already has a default material. And I want to show you how to add materials in the next lecture. So delete the cube by hitting X and delete. And now let's add a new one. So shift A, mesh, cube. This one doesn't have a material. Now let's rename this object building in the outliner. So double click and type building. Good. Now let's switch to edit mode, so tab, and face select mode over here. Let's deselect all, Alt A. Now let's go to wireframe. This is this button over here. This way you can see through the model and now let's orbit a bit and select the two faces through which the x-axis passes. This is the red one. So this face and hold down shift this face. Now let's inset the faces. To insert a face you can use the I shortcut and we want the thickness to be 0 0.25. So you can set the thickness by hitting I to inset we're now insetting, and then immediately 0 0.25, enter. You should get something like this. Now we want to extrude the two selected faces. However, if we try to do it now, they will both be extruded in one direction. So first we have to change the pivot point. By default, the pivot point, which is over here, is set to median point. But this won't work for us. Let's change it to individual origins. And then each face will be extruded independently of the others. And now we can extrude. With the two faces selected, extrude them 0.25 units so that they protrude from the cube. 
To do that, just hit E, 0 0.25, enter. Good. Now, inside the faces again, this time the thickness should be 0 0.5. So, I, 0 0.5, enter. And now, extrude these two faces again, this time three units. So, E, 3, enter. Now, let's add a horizontal loop cut that goes around the whole object. To do that, just hit Ctrl R and hover your mouse over one of the vertical edges, like this. Good. Now, when you see the yellow edge loop, just hit Enter twice to confirm the addition of the loop and its central position. So, this should look like so. Now, go to Vertex Select Mode, Front View. To go to Front View, you can hit 1 on your numpad, but on your numpad, not on your main part of the keyboard, on your numpad, 1. Now, you are in Front Orthographic View. Now, let's deselect all. So, Alt-A, and let's border select the vertices in the lower part of the mesh. So, you can just drag your mouse over here, like this. Now, delete the selected vertices. To delete the vertices, just hit X and select Vertices. Your mesh should now look like so. Now, hit Ctrl S to save the file. Now, orbit the scene, so press your middle mouse button and drag until you can see the bottom part of the model. Now, switch to Edge Select mode here and select the edge loop at the bottom. To do that, hold down Alt and click on one of the bottom edges. So Alt and maybe this one here. This selects the whole loop. Now extrude the selected edges two units down along the z-axis. To do it, just hit E, Z, negative 2, enter. Negative because we want to extrude down. Okay, it starts looking like a building, doesn't it? Now we don't need the faces at the bottom here because we won't see this part of the building at all. It will just stand on the ground. Now our model is going to become a building, so let's go to front view, one on a numpad, and let's add some loop cuts to model the windows. First, let's add 10 horizontal loop cuts. To do that, Hit Ctrl R, then hover your mouse until you see one horizontal loop cut and type in 10 from your keyboard and then hit Enter twice to confirm the loop cuts and their position. Now, in a similar way, add five vertical loop cuts in the central part of the building. So, Ctrl R, this is the central part of the building. So we have to hover over one of the horizontal edges and type 5. Enter, enter. Good. Now we have quite a lot of edges here. Next, let's add 10 vertical loop cuts in the left lateral part of the building, in the left wing. So Ctrl R, hover and type 10. Enter, enter. And Let's do the same on the right side. So, Control R, hover, 10, enter, enter. And again, hit Control S to save. Now, go to Solid Shading, which is here, and Face Select mode here, and select the faces that are going to be the windows. Also, select the six middle faces at the bottom of the central part of the building for the door. So, we want the windows to be here. Now hold down Shift and select all the other faces for the windows. Here, here, here and here.
Now on this side the same, still holding down shift. Now we want some windows in this part too, like here and here and here, here, here and here and a door. This is going to be the door. Good. Now extrude the windows and the door inward 0.1 units. To do it, let's just orbit a little to see it better. Now to extrude inwards, you just hit E and then negative 0.1. Enter. Now the building should look like so. Good. Now let's go to object mode, so tab, and hit N to open the sidebar over here. Look at the dimensions of the building. Now, is the building the right size? What size should the building be? Well, the model seems pretty small. The building is only 3 meters tall. The z-axis is for the height of the building. Now, this is the height of two pretty short people standing on each other's shoulders. Now, we can assume the height of 2.5 meters for each story, plus a little extra for the roof. So, a height of 12 meters seems pretty reasonable. So, just scale the whole building by the factor of 4. So hit S, 4, enter. You can now zoom out. Now you can see the dimensions have changed and they now look more reasonable. Now, the model is scaled, but there's another problem. Look at the scale in the sidebar. It's four on each axis. This may cause trouble, for example, when we export the model to Panda 3D. The scale of a finished model should be always one on each axis. To fix this, we have to apply the scale. In order to do that, go to the object menu and under apply, select scale. Now the scale is one on each axis, just like it should be. You can now hit N again to close the sidebar. Now there is one more thing to do before we can call it A. It's about the origin of the model geometry. If you look at the model, you will see a yellow dot over here, this yellow dot. Here it is under the 3D cursor, but it doesn't have to. Now anyway, this is the origin of geometry. If you then append the building model in another file, it will be appended at the location of the 3D cursor in that file. But what does it actually mean? It means the origin point will be at that location. As you can see, the origin is somewhere near the roof. So if we appended the model to a scene with a terrain, most of the building would be below the terrain. Also, if you tried to rotate or scale the model, it would always be relative to the origin point. In our case, it would be more convenient to move the origin point to the bottom of the model. To do so, with the building selected, switch to edit mode, so tab. Now make sure you're in front view, so hit 1 on your numpad and select all, so A. Then move everything up until the origin point, which doesn't move along, is at the bottom. You can hold down control while moving the model to enable snapping. So hit G, Z, now hold down control and drag up. Fine. Left click. Now the origin point is at the bottom of the building. When done, you can switch back to object mode. And you can still see the origin point at the bottom. Save the file. So Control S. And that's it for this part. In the next part, we'll add materials to our building model. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, 
You're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.